everybody. I'm Cheryl Crisp for Movie Guides Backstage Pass, and this is Coffee and Conversation with Matt Marr. Hey, Cheryl. Hey, Matt. Thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. You have a um, really exciting project going on right now. Your music is featured in the Chosen uh, movie. Tell us how that came about. In the process of connecting with Dallas, um, I basically shared with him a song I had recently written uh, with another artist in town that was inspired by uh, the second episode, a scene in the second episode of the first season of the show. I sent the song to Dallas and didn't realize that it was actually the first scene that they ever wrote for the show. And so um, the song meant a lot to him. It connected a ton with the staff and the production team, other members of the creative team with the show. And we just sort of kept dialoguing about it. And um, he really felt passionately that we should shoot a music video for it. So I, I thought, I mean, I'm not gonna say no. <laughs> uh, basically what we did was we went to the all the sets and basically sort of filmed me um, sort of in these places where characters in the show had their sort of in-between moments or, or encounters with Jesus. Cause the song's called The In-Between. And um, it's inspired by this conversation that Mary Magdalene has with Nicodemus. And she says, all I know is that I was one way and now I'm completely different. And the thing that happened in between was him. So we sort of filmed all these moments um, of me in the places where these characters were when they had their moments with Jesus. Matt, what was on your heart when you wrote the in-between? I mean, I think what was... So, uh, you know, when you write songs in Nashville, people kind of come together and someone will have an idea usually for a song. And uh, Judah Akers, who was the co-writer on this, said, hey, I really want to write a song based on this line from this episode of The Chosen. And I said, OK, what's the line? And so he said it. And immediately I thought, well, whoever wrote that is a genius because that just sort of sums up everyone's encounter with the gospel. And so I think for me, then it was a question of like, it, that's clearly the chorus. The last, phrase, last line of the chorus needs to be, he was the in-between. And so then it's sort of like, if you have that as your ending point, you figure out like, what's the starting point, you know? And, uh, and so I think as we were writing the song, it was just thinking about the transformation of what happens in the heart of somebody who's, encountered the love of God. He performs miracles and seeks no credit? Well, what does he look like? Is he a member of Sanhedrin? Would you at least know him if you saw him again? <laughs> I don't know why I am sharing this with you. I, I don't understand it myself. But here is what I can tell you. I was one way. And now I am completely different. And the thing that happened in between was him. So yes, I will know him for the rest of my life. <laughs> What do you personally love about The Chosen and why do you think it's resonating with millions of people? I think the thing I love about it is the humanity of it. I think that, um, you know, we've kind of moved from being a culture that tells stories by listening, like aud auditory, an auditory, you know, based culture to a visual based culture. And so now we tell stories with images. And um, so scripture stands at an interesting uh, point with that because the Bible is something you read. But 
what this show is doing is it's helping really for the first time in 2000 years, it's giving people a visual representation of the life of Jesus. And it's inviting them in some ways to step into the story on a very human level. We're getting to camp out more around all these different characters. The human dimension of the story of the New Testament is something that I think this show is going to capture over a long form in a way that we've never really had in 2000 years. Dallas Jenkins, the creator, co-writer, and director, his goal is to get the chosen to a billion people and have it translated to 600 languages. That's so incredible. For you personally, Matt, um, what is it like being a small part of something so incredibly big and sort of of biblical proportions? Yeah, it's overwhelming. I, you know, I think that I've been very, very fortunate as I look over the past, you know, uh, years of ministry. I've been part of kind of moments like that where you're a small part of a, something that's really, really big. You know, I think about next year, it'll be 10 years since I sang uh, Lord, I Need You in Rio on a beach with 3 million people. And, you know, being such a small part of such a massive event and seeing the impact that that song and, and even specifically that moment, what it meant for so many uh, Christians and Catholics around the world. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's once again, it, I think it's a reminder for people that, you know, this movement, you know, called Christianity is a, it's a global movement. It's very, it's, it's way bigger than any of us can even, you know, sort of fathom or wrap our heads around. And when people partner with the show in various ways, even just by watching it or telling your neighbor about it or, or, or whatever, you know, it's a reminder that we are part of something that's so much bigger than just ourselves. And um, it's a un it's such a unique and pretty amazing time, I think, to be alive and to be following Jesus. Your inspirational music is sort of a way for you to minister to millions of people. Uh, what do you think about the impact when you combine inspirational music and movies? Yeah, I mean, I think cinema has a longstanding history of showing the power of when you take all these forms of art and fuse them together. So you've got, like I said, you've got acting, you've got imagery, you've got set design, you've got costumes, you've got lighting, and and you've got sound effects, and then you've got special effects now, and you've got music, and you put it all together, and it, it makes for compelling stories. And I think when people who believe in the redemptive value of art to do that, to remind us of the things that are really important and to help us get in touch with our deepest longings and sometimes our deepest fears, sometimes our deepest desires, um, it's powerful truth telling and it's important more than ever before. You know, I, I, I'm still a firm believer as an artist that beauty, you know, as a, it's considered one of the three trans, transcendentals. It's one of the ways in which we can actually come to see glimpses of God. And I think that, um, that, yeah, that, that film and music working together is such a powerful combination. I mean, I wanted to be a, that I wanted to do film scoring when I was a kid. So, uh, so that I, you know, this was like, this was like my very small little, small little <laughs> taste of it, which was great. I wasn't prepared for the part about me being on the screen, but uh, I'm getting used to it. What was Matt Marr like as a little boy? Have you always loved music? As long as I can remember, I've wanted to carry a tune. <laughs> so, you know, I remember being in the third grade and singing in choir at church. And my friend at the time and I were singing so well in tune together that it was creating what's called an overtone which is like a, a it was creating another note and it uh i could hear it and i thought oh i guess angels must be singing with us uh i just didn't understand physics at the time and maybe it was both but um but i think as early as i can remember music has been the thing where 
I've felt intimately connected with God. It's sort of been my, I don't know, I don't want to say my refuge, but it's the place where I encounter him. And uh, so it's, I think Matt Maher as a boy was enamored with the wonder of it. And I think I'm always trying to get back to that place. Now that little boy of Matt Maher has grown up and now you have a wife and you have two little boys of your own. I guess they're not so little anymore and a daughter. And um, you found yourself like many of us during COVID sort of in a different situation. You weren't traveling and, and working as much. And you um, started going through a difficult time of anxiety. And so can you describe that anxiety for us, Matt? And then also what weapons do, did you use to battle anxiety? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, what I would describe the anxiety is it starts out first as just uh, struggling with the concepts of scarcity versus abundance. There's never enough time. There's never enough money. There's never enough um, affirmation. There's not enough. There's just there's not enough versus the notion of there's plenty to go around. I started actually though for the first time it was like physically experiencing like that the tightening in your chest and your the inability to take a deep breath and so I I think you know managing anxiety and stress there's a whole um suite of options a cascade of of different options that are at our disposal I think the first thing first and foremost hopefully is that people would have other people around them to help them be seen just that people don't feel isolated or stigmatized in their anxiety. I think sometimes there's a sense of shame that can come from being anxious. You start hating, you start being mad at yourself because you're anxious, which actually just makes you more anxious. Mm -hmm. um, and I think some of that is just the, the, the sense of isolation that starts to happen and just to have people, uh, that know you, that see you, and that you're accepted by them and loved by them. Um, I, you know, to me, I think there's a spiritual aspect to it. There's a physical aspect to it. So usually when you're stuck in anxiety, you're stuck in fight or flight, uh, which is a, a part of your prefrontal cortex in your brain that uh, is, we don't really need to use anymore, um, but it's just left over. So it it was designed that if you're if you saw a bear or a tiger, it would it would fill you with adrenaline, so you would run away. But the problem now is that your brain doesn't know the difference between a tiger and your mortgage being due. <laughs> so, right. so you have to get out of it. And so there's a lot of, you know, prayer is a massive way of helping to deal with stress. But so is actually uh, running, working out. It's a great way to deal with stress. So I got a bunch of gym equipment. I started uh, working out regularly. That actually did wonders for the physical aspect of it. And then, you know, Paul talks in scripture about the renewal of your mind. And so repeating the promises of God over your life. Um, you know, uh, it's amazing once you alleviate some of the physical symptoms, it can create just enough margin then for... Uh, prayer to start doing the deep the deeper work of really confronting okay where am I where am I not where am I afraid where am I not trusting God and then what do I need to let go of but it's hard to do that when it's like you're you're fighting your body and your mind at the same time and your soul is usually our souls are you know our souls thirst for God but it's hard for them to take control sometimes because our minds and our bodies can kind of get in the way. So I think for me, it was a thing of like dealing, dealing with my flesh in a, in a, in a, in, in a physical way. And then, um, and then, and having people to talk to, uh, you, you know, and I would encourage people. It's like, if you need to see a therapist, like go, like talk it out, don't carrying this stuff around and, you know, taking your burdens and just throwing them on other people isn't really a sustainable way of living. And then, and then obviously like prayer goes bef before and around and in the middle of it all, but 
you know, I had some amazing moments, uh, literally pushing a weight sled up and down my driveway. So Matt, you have some brand new music out right now. You have a new album, The Stories I Tell Myself. What was the inspiration for that album? It's a great question. It's a collection of songs really written during the pandemic that I think are focused on friendship with God and friendship with others. And the title track is sort of was me sort of using my gift in working out some of those aspects of depression and anxiety of these are the stories I tell myself. I tell myself that you're not enough. I tell myself like, I'm going to, you know, my dad struggled with anxiety. So it's like, I'm going to end up just like him. You know, I mean, these are things that everyone says to themselves. And you're absolutely right, Cheryl, that because we don't talk about it with other people, we don't realize how common this actually is. Like it, it's, it really is a crazy thing that in this day and age, the church in some ways are, is just starting to come online with how important the understanding of mental health is. Right. So, you know, these songs are kind of journal entries, I think, over the past two years, focusing on different moments. But they were written with friends that I was just sort of in the trench with. Matt, there's so much negative in the world. How important do you think it is for us to immerse ourselves in positive things like church, inspirational music and movies, um, scripture reading? Um, you know, to arm ourselves. Yeah, I think it's tremendously important. I think, you know, some of it now is that we're in a day and age of, of uh, information and everyone ha can have an opinion about something. So part of the reason why the world seems divided is because we've never actually heard this many opinions before all at once. So I think as a believer, it's really important to be filled with the love of God, just so you can learn to listen to people. Because sometimes people have, you know, now the default is, it used to be, let me get to know you and I'll tell you what I think. And it's like, let me tell you what I think. And if you agree, we can get to know each other. And I think that's the part that's hard. I think that, that um, our faith sort of invites us into the higher virtues of long suffering and really journeying with people. And that, you're absolutely right, that does require a tremendous amount of love that I think only God can provide. You have to really know yourself and you have to know who you are. And it's very hard in my experience to do that without the love and grace and mercy of God. Matt, one of my favorite songs of yours still is Litany of Saints. Hmm. How important do you think it is for us to sort of wrap ourselves in the blanket of, you know, Mary, Joseph, Jesus, all the saints and call on them, you know, to intercede for us. Yeah. I mean, I, I as a Catholic, uh, I think one of the things that combats this sort of sense of isolation of our time that we find ourselves in is the realization that, you know, we are baptized into the family of God and that family includes all those who've gone before us and and that as they worship god in heaven they're actively encouraging us and praying praying a song and similarly in the same way that i could ask a friend hey i've got this such and such going on in my life will you pray for me um we can do the same thing with people who literally don't have any other distraction <laughs> that's all they're doing right now is praying for eternity so yeah, there, I can't think of better people to ask. Um, Very and that's, powerful. Yeah, exactly. You know, that is that that in particular, that setting for me, it's the first time I ever wrote something, a piece of liturgical music for um, church. And so that one holds a special place in my heart. I mean, I think specifically that that one, the, the you know, the goal, I think for me was that people would feel that sense of uh, communion that they're part of a community. Matt, 
for my last question. We, like the apostles and the chosen and the apostles in the Bible, we are all as Christians chosen to share God's love and light and message of hope to the world. How important do you think it is for us to step out in faith? Yeah, I, I think I think anything worth doing in life involves risk. If you're going to do anything worth doing, you have to take a chance. And I think that in some ways that the purpose of faith is to arm us with the reality that anything worth doing take involves risk. How am I called being, how am I, how am I called in this moment to take a risk in, uh, in loving a person and extending myself and being sacrificial with my time? Uh, you know, it's in my experience, it's not always the big things. It's usually the thousands of little, little moments throughout the day in which I'm called to do it with great love and, and risk. There's absolute risk involved in loving. Um, but that's what our Lord did for us. He risked it all. Matt, thank you so much for joining us and keep doing all the great things you're doing. Thank you very much, Cheryl. And to watch more videos like this, go to movieguide.org.